everyone. I'm Amber. And I'm Callie. And we are mom and daughter. Um, we are the Donut and Okra team. So if you follow us on Facebook, um, you can find our Donut and Okra page where we post our mom and daughter videos. So we are going to do kind of a double feature tonight because we meant to do a video a bit earlier. Yeah. And it sort of life happened. Um, we sort of couldn't get our video on going yeah. earlier because our youngest was having a nap and nap time is too important. So we couldn't do our video because our kitchen is right near the bedroom where our youngest was sleeping. So that's why we're a little, little delayed getting going here. So tonight, Callie, what are we making? We're making instant pot sour cream pork chops. Pork chops, yum. So. We are gonna make this recipe, I came across it. It is from the Wholesome Recipe Box and we will post a link at the end of the video. Yeah. Um, and we decided on this recipe because Callie's dad, he loves Swedish meatballs. He loves that sour cream, creamy sauce. Yeah. So we're gonna do pork chops, but we're gonna add in some sauteed mushrooms as well to this recipe to kind of make it that cream of mushroom pork chop taste. I pre-cut so, the mushrooms. Yes, Callie's done some work already so that our video can be a little bit shorter. Yeah. So we are gonna get started and we're not gonna use an Instant Pot tonight. The recipe is for an Instant Pot, so if you have one, great, dig it out. But we're gonna use the Ninja Foodie. So I'm just gonna turn you this way so you can see our, here's our Ninja Foodie. We have this contraption here. We'll show you which one we've got. So the Ninja Foodie that we have, we chose to invest in this particular model because it's an all-in-one. Yeah. It is like your Instant Pot, it's like your air fryer, it's a dehydrator, it's a yogurt maker, it's, it's a slow a, cooker. It's a broiler. It broils, bake. it bakes, and what else does it do, Callie? Uh, it sears, it steams, it slow yes. cooks. It does it all. So sure this does. is the, very, the perfect, perfect uh, appliance if you are buying for perhaps somebody who doesn't have great uh, cooking facilities, this would be perfect. It does everything. And we use it all the time. We probably use this thing at least a couple times a week, I would say. And what I like is, well, when we were thinking about getting an Instant Pot, we opted for this because we figured we'd probably otherwise end up with an Instant Pot and an air fryer. And this, although it did cost about as much as buying both, um, we didn't have to store two gigantic bulky appliances. So. This is worth every penny. It is worth every penny, I agree. We've used it a ton. It owes us nothing already at this point. Mm -hmm. um, again, we'll post a link to the particular model that we have at the end of this video. So if you wanna check it out. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get started on our Instant Pot Sour Cream Pork Chops. This is a super easy recipe, very few ingredients, so we thought it would be a good one for tonight. It's also really good for being budget friendly. We were able to pick up pork chops on sale at our local grocery store, so that kind of prompted this video as well. I'm going to start with the onions. You're going to start with the onions? Okay, so Callie's going to start. I'm going to have to turn this, Callie, so that everybody can see what you're doing here over at the Ninja Foodie, and you're going to have to stand here so everyone can see you. There you go. I'm searing the onions in here. You are. You're going to have to get it going. Do you remember how to start it? I pressed the button. And then you're going to have to turn, it's on saute automatically, but it's also on high. So what you're going to want to do is hit the temperature button. Come on. Yeah, push it pretty hard. And then you can change it from high to medium, high to medium. Maybe go down to medium. Start there. And if we have to turn it up or down, we can. So then you have to hit the center button and it starts. So now it's in saute mode. So that's where we're going to start with our onions. So you got to start with a little bit of butter, Callie. Butter. So Who doesn't like butter? I don't know. Butter makes everything better. We think so. Oh, as I was mentioning, we are going to do this. It's a very budget-friendly recipe. Um, we are a family of five. We've got three, three kids, two adults, and um, all of the recipes that Callie and I try and feature on our Donut and Okra page are family-friendly, uh, taste flavors, but oh, maybe a bit more, but also budget-friendly. Um, that much butter? Go for it. Sounds good. You want me to scrape it out for you? There we go. Just take a peek. And this thing always makes some popping sounds. It sounds like popcorn popping, but that's normal. So it's normal. if you have one, don't worry. It's doing its thing. So it's gonna get to heating up a little bit. Maybe I'll turn your temp up just a little bit, okay. Callie, until that gets going. We chopped up three medium yellow onions. Just break it up the butter. Okay, you wanna scrape these in? Try to get them in the pot. 
the whole bunch fell on the side, Miss Kelly. That's all right. We'll grab them when you get them all in. Perfect. I'm going to turn it around for you. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so that's starting to sizzle. That's what we want to hear. So the next thing I'm going to get going is I'm going to heat up my frying pan. We're going to sear the pork chops before we put them into uh, the Ninja Foodie or your Instant Pot. So I'm going to get my uh, frying pan heated up over here on Jordan. medium high. Hello. Okay, Callie, do you want to add some salt and pepper into there as well? Yeah. Well, keep stirring this? Well, you don't have to stir it continuously. And the nice thing about this is it doesn't get super hot. You can put your spoon right on top and it's not going to start on fire or anything like that. I really like the Ninja Foodie too for when Callie's cooking with me or any of my kids because it's, pretty safe. I mean, aside from the pressure cooker function, which I always do the venting on it, the rest of it, I really like it because it's, it's cool to the touch. It's a pretty safe place for them to learn how to cook. Adding, pepper is so good. adding some pepper too. Great. I'm going to check on my pan over there and see how it's doing. So you can see I've got my pan heating up. I've got it on medium high and I'm again, I'm using this, the rock copper pan that I told you guys about in what previous video. I love it so much. Okay, so to my pan that I'm warming up here, I'm gonna add more butter, butter, butter all around in this recipe. So I'm gonna add a good knob of butter here. We're sauteing our pork chops. Okay, so over here, what I'm gonna do is I've taken our pork chops and I've just layered them between paper towels. You always wanna dry your meat like that. Reason being is you'll get a nice sear and you'll get them more brown if there's no moisture on them. So always layer them between pork, uh, between paper towel to get all that moisture off, no matter what kind of meat it is. Gonna get rid of that. Okay, so we're just gonna brown these pork chops, get them going. These are just center cut boneless pork chops. Again, as I mentioned, we're just doing what was on sale at the supermarket. So this is what we got, because they were on a steal of a deal last week. We bought a whole bunch and threw them in the freezer. That's what we tend to do for our family. We tend to just buy whatever meats are in the flyer on sale. Um, and that allows us to be able to eat lots of proteins and uh, have it be pretty budget friendly. Okay, so I'm gonna just add some uh, mineral salt and pepper to these pork chops. You just have to hit the temperature gauge, Kelly. And then you just turn the dial. And then you can turn it down one notch. So you don't want the onions to get too brown. You want me to check it? Did you get it to go, Callie? Yep. Okay, so we want to do these like medium high. Just watch them. You just want to do them like maybe two or three minutes per side. Just, you're just not cooking them through. You're really just browning them. That's all you're doing here. The Instant Pot or the Ninja Foodie are wonderful for, um, in this case, we're going to be doing for the pressure cooking. But if you just pressure cook meat, it just turns gray. It doesn't have any color. It doesn't look all that appetizing. So you want to give them a little golden color before. Yep, just turn the power button right off. Bye. If you, if you think they're done, okay. So just taking a peek here. Not oh, quite, not quite golden. Not gonna take too long. I did crank it up just a little bit. It might get a little bit smoky. I might need to put this at medium high, just cause it might get smoky. Almost ready for a flip. I like them to be like pretty nice and caramelized on this side before I give them a flip. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give them a flip? Go for it. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. That looks beautiful. Looking pretty good, Kelly. I think this batch is almost done. So what I'll do is I'll grab a plate and then you can put the second batch in. Okay. I can put the second batch in. So these are not fully cooked. These are just Brown. Lightly browned on the outside, just to sear in the juices, give them a little nicer appearance, but, and also render a little of that fat. These weren't super, they didn't have a super big fat cap on them, so I didn't trim any off. Okay, so you can just leave the butter that's in there, Kelly, you can just put the next batch right in. I'm just going to set these ones aside. Some salt, not too heavy on the salt. Ah, it's stuck. Is it stuck? Yeah, we've got this pink salt grinder. Whoops. It came with, I think, just regular salt yeah. in it when we first got it. It was from Costco. Um, and then we filled it up with this pink salt. And, of course, where of all places do we find the Himalayan pink salt for, like, home scents? Home scents, winners, Marshalls. I don't know. I seem to sometimes find the most interesting kitchen things that we can't find in our regular grocery stores. I find there. 
Okay, you want to give them a flip, Kelly? I think you're almost about to turn to the next minute on the clock. By the time you get them all flipped, it'll be perfect. Careful for it spitting. You want to always turn it away from yourself. And that way, if it falls by accident, the fat's not going to splash you. Okay, so always flip it away from yourself. Yep, like that. You want to switch clock with me? I'll move out of your way. It's loud. I know it's loud. This part of the video is always going to be loud. That's so, good. That looks really good. Let me grab the plate, Callie. Okay. Okay. So again, for anybody just joining, I know they don't look fully cooked. They aren't at this point. We're just browning them before they go into the ninja foodie. Okay, maybe stack one on this side. I'm gonna turn your heat off on here. Be careful, sweetie. Got a good grip. And maybe one more on this side of the plate. Good job. There we go. Oh, that's quieter. Let's move that off the heat. We'll just put this over here for now. Okay, so Callie turned off the heat on her onions. I'm going to give you guys a peek and you can see. So these were just thin wedges of yellow onion. We did three onions and we just sauteed them up in a little butter with some salt and pepper. And with the heat off, you're going to do the next step. So I'm going to wait for Callie. Just taking off your You're necklace. taking off your necklace. Okay. All right, Callie. So to your pot here, we are going to need to add, with the heat off, you're going to need to add the beef stock. So we've got two cups of beef stock. Careful, don't drip on the outside of the pot. Okay, and then your Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons. Which is half a, a tablespoon. Which is half a tablespoon, so we're gonna do that. And I just measure it right over there. It smells salty. It smells salty? That's because I think there's actually anchovies in Worcestershire, that's what gives it such good flavor. Okay, so once you get that in there, now just give it a stir. Get any of the brown bits off the bottom. That's all the flavor. It's the good stuff. Now we gotta go ahead and put our pork chops in here and we're gonna get it pressure cooking. And that's the part where it might take it a little while to come up to pressure. I'm hoping it doesn't take too long, but we'll see. Sometimes it takes longer to come up to pressure than to actually cook. So grab the tongs. I like to Do you wanna put them in, Kelly? Mm -hmm. Okay, you put them in. To the pot try and get them in a nice even layer mm -hmm. are you able to get the last couple in there so they're not all going to be in the liquid there's only two cups of liquid in there and again our ninja foodie is pretty big so some are going to be out of the liquid some will be in the liquid that's totally fine it's going to generate steam it's a pressure cooker so you don't have to worry about that we're going to take these leftover juices and add them in too because again that's all the flavor stuff. flavor we're going to turn it so people can kind of see okay kelly let's just make sure that they're in a nice even layer I think we can squeeze a couple more into the liquid. Oops, did I bump you? Not much. Okay, good. Okay, so here's our pork chops Orange heading in. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about our Ninja Foodie. Say, so you can see here, this is the lid for air frying. It's got the element in the top there. Yeah. Excuse how my, maybe dirty it looks. And this is our pressure cooker lid. So you do have to have the, the heat off when you go to put the pressure cooker, cooker, cooker lid. That is a tongue twister. When you go to put this on, you have to have it. And vent. Yes, okay, so Callie's showing you there's a little, we'll get nice and close. There's a little thing here for sealing and venting it. Make sure you have it on seal when you start out. And of course, vent when you wanna be done. And you have to have the heat off, otherwise this isn't gonna wanna go on proper. There's like a rubber ring in here and it comes out for washing, you can see that. You just wanna make sure that's totally popped in completely or you won't get a good seal. Other than that, it's pretty easy. It just goes on in this position and clicks to lock. Make sure you've got it on seal. Turn your power back on. Searing my mushrooms. We're gonna do that next, Kelly. Let's just get this rolling because it's gonna take a few minutes to come to pressure. So we're gonna put it on pressure high and we wanna pressure cook this only eight minutes. That's all it says it needs. We're gonna get it going. So right now it has a little, I don't know if you guys can see. It says preheating, it's kind of flashing and it's got a little blue steam uh, symbol to show that it's got the pressure cook lid on. So now it's gonna take time to come up to pressure. So this can take anywhere from often 10 to 15 minutes for it to come to pressure before it'll start counting down the eight minutes of cook time. Kelly will show you she chopped up or sliced up a whole bunch of mushrooms. Yeah. And we're gonna add in um, some mushrooms to the finished gravy of sorts, that sour cream sauce that we're making of this recipe, because we love to sauteed mushrooms. And Can I just I think mushrooms and pork chops go so good. I'm gonna take so before you go over there, honey, you need to heat up your pan. Okay. You wanna go over and maybe use the smaller pan this time. So Callie's gonna get a little knob of butter again. The butter dish is right there on the island. Yep. 
That would be great. Kelly's gonna get a little butter going in here. See if you guys can see. Need another knife? Another knife. We're gonna use this other pan because this bigger pan um, to go with our, our sour cream pork chops, we wanna do some green beans. So we want to use this bigger, deeper pan for our green beans, which I'm actually, I think while you do the mushrooms, I'm going to get the green beans going. Butter. Gally's on more butter. It's definitely an S recipe. <laughs> definitely. That's a perfect get... amount of butter. That's okay, already gonna... melting. Look how fast it's melting. It's melting because you got your heat on already. So if you just let that melt completely, Callie. Yeah. So Callie's gonna get her butter melting. So mine already still has a little bit of fat from the pork chops. And I'm gonna leave that in there for flavor for the green beans. Cause these are just gonna be literally buttered green beans that we're gonna put with our pork chops. I am, um, oh, I also did some mashed potatoes ahead of time for the rest of the family. And I did use yellow potatoes. Like I could have had that if I wanted a crossover, but I'm gonna stick to the buttered green beans with my pork chops so I can stick in the S. So I think this is, Pretty much up to temp. I'm going to do the green beans. Callie's going to do the sauteed mushrooms while our pressure cooker is going, our Ninja Foodie is going. So I'm just using from Costco just frozen green beans. These are just a green and yellow green bean mix. These are Canadian green beans, nice and local beans. So we're going to get those in there. You need a hand inside? Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna give Kelly a hand here. She's gonna put her mushrooms into her pan. Maybe I'll just help you like this. Okay. And Kelly's gonna get those sauteing up. We're just gonna keep it really simple for our sides. This is like literally, you probably could make this supper start to finish a half an hour or less. So, um, and we're hoping for nice tender pork chops. So it's a quick and easy recipe, really family friendly. Make sure you're all the way on your burner there. There you go. Really family friendly. Um, our kids really enjoy this kind of a meal. I mean, who really, who doesn't like a nice pork chop with some gravy? Good stuff. Okay, Callie, do you want to give your uh, mushrooms just a little salt and pepper? Yep. Okay. There you go. That looks good. Don't do too much. That's perfect. So we kind of salted and peppered everything else. We like to layer the salt and pepper flavor. Maybe I'm just going to turn the phone so people can see you a little better, Callie. There we go. There's Callie. Okay. Yours is coming up to temperature. Now that you added the salt, it's going to start releasing some of the moisture from the mushrooms. So they'll get going. They've absorbed all your butter. Perfect. And they're starting to brown. They're starting to brown. Yeah, they'll take a little time. I'm gonna give these a little stir. So I still had all of the juices and the fat from the pork chops in here. It's gonna give some good flavor to our green beans. I like to do green beans sometimes just with um, bacon, a little bit of crumbled bacon. You oh. cook your bacon first, throw your green beans in. Oh, it's so good. So I'm sure the pork chops. Since the green will be good beans too. are slightly frozen, I think, like when you cover them, you're gonna have like a the frozen stuff is going to like turn into steam. It will, and I'm going to add a tad of water to this Cali too to give them a little yeah. steam. I'm just letting them sort of thaw a little bit first. You can see what we're cooking up. Kelly's sauteing up her mushrooms. I'm cooking up the beans. Our pressure cooker still has not come to pressure. Hopefully it's going to do that sometime soon. All right. So to the green beans, I'm just going to add a splash of water and let them steam up a little bit. Mm. Oh, the mushrooms are going good. So these are going to take about five to seven minutes to steam, so I'll just set a timer so I don't forget about them. They're starting to steam already. Yep, that's what we want to see. That's what's going to cook them up. I think I'll go seven because they're frozen still. Okay, Kelly, your mushrooms are looking pretty good. Do you think we should add some roasted garlic paste into there? Oh, yeah. Since we have it? I thought we were going to add them to the onions. No, we're going to add some mushrooms. There you go, it's starting to get really soft. That's good, that's what you want. You want it to get nice and brown. So I found this at our local health food store market and it is organic roasted garlic. Should we add a teaspoon? Sure, and it's delicious. And I love that it's been roasted ahead. It's so awesome to add to just like mayonnaise and make like a roasted garlic aioli. So good. So we're just gonna add a good spoonful of that to give some good flavor, maybe a spoon and a half. This part's not in the recipe. This is us adding in. We kind of tend to do that around here. 
So I see our Ninja Foodie starting to steam a little bit out the vent. That's normal. It will do that because then in a couple of minutes after it builds enough pressure, the steam will stop and the vent will close. And then it'll start the countdown of the eight minutes for the pork chops. I'm gonna leave this one covered. Yours is still looking good, Callie. So you wanna saute these, Callie, until all that moisture that's in your pan kind of cooks away and they start to brown a little bit and get nice and golden so that they're not soggy mushrooms, but they're nice and sauteed mushrooms. Should I just leave these for a bit? You could, you could. You're just gonna leave them like that? Yeah, and just... Yeah, uh, right there is fine. Taking you on a tour it's again. It's for it to So, I don't know if you can see. Can you see that I there? See the, I can see the steam. So the Ninja Foodie is starting to steam. There's a little, like, silver. I'm not gonna put my finger near it because that's hot steam, but there is a little tiny silver uh, metal thing there so in theory, when it builds enough steam, that should close as long as our seal is on nice. <laughs> if I didn't push the seal all the way into place, it won't. Um, that little button won't push up. But I'm hoping no, it's going to do it. it. Yeah, that little thing. Don't put your finger by it. It's very hot steam and it could, it could burn you. This yeah. is the only part that I say is a little bit dangerous with kids. But um, I think it's important for kids to still learn kitchen safety. So with some guidance... I think it's totally fine. So it's just, see if I can turn you, and maybe you can see when it stops. There we go. So it's still doing its steaming thing, and hopefully any minute now, it's going to seal, and it's going to come on. Hopefully it's going to not make a liar out of me. Okay, there we go. It did it. Yay. Okay, I'm going to show you guys. So now we've got no more steam, little button closed, and now it's building pressure. It's going to count down. Any minute now, this will turn, and it'll start... Uh, counting down eight minutes. So it still says preheating. It's in like that last few seconds of uh, building its pressure. So pretty typical like any pressure cooker, um, even the kind that you use um, that are just pressure cookers does the same sort of thing. But this is how the Ninja Foodie works. So it's very, very easy. I don't even think we've ever really read the manual. It's just kind of self-explanatory. It's, it's pretty awesome. There's a few functions on here we've never used. We haven't tried the dehydrator. We have a dehydrator, so we haven't tried that in our Ninja Foodie. And we haven't tried to make yogurt in here, but it does have a slow cook yogurt function. So we might do that sometime too. Um, we'll find out whether we ever do that. I tend to like quick yogurts, yogurts that culture on the counter, rather than yogurts that have to be cooked. So I usually gravitate towards those cultures, using those cultures. But. There's Callie's mushrooms. You can see if she's cooked them all up. So Callie, I think those look pretty great. Do you want to turn your heat off? Yeah, you can just turn it right off because those mushrooms are going to go into the pressure cooker once it's done. It's still counting, so we're hoping any minute now it's going to say eight minutes. I would have had it. You could also add like some fresh herbs in there. In summertime, we like to grow, um, we have a pretty big garden, it's about 2,000 square feet. And uh, we grow a lot of thyme and rosemary, and um, that would be awesome in the mushrooms to put into the gravy later would be some uh, fresh thyme that would be um, chopped up and put into there would be delicious. Yeah. Give them a little stir and see how they're doing. We I just can't... like simple green beans sometimes. Sorry, I... Kelly, what were you going to say? I can't wait to use one of our sprinkles back to that. Oh yes, we got some new spatulas. We're gonna use those on our next video. Hopefully later this evening we'll do that other video. And we got some really cute spatulas. Sprinkles. Okay. Alright. Uh, these are really hot, Callie, but if you want to let that one cool, you can yeah. taste it too. I'm just gonna see if they're tender enough. Mm-hmm. Perfect. There's a little bit of moisture in these green beans just for me adding for steaming them, so I'm just gonna drain that off. I'm just gonna grab the oven mitts, Callie. Oh, never mind, throwing it over here. Okay, I'm gonna just drain the green beans and I'm gonna add a touch more butter to them. In case you haven't noticed a reoccurring theme here, we really, really like butter in our house. We don't overdo it, but we do add like a teaspoon to this, a teaspoon mm -hmm. to that. We do love butter. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more salted butter to our green beans now that they're done. A little knob or so. Eh. Yeah. Keep in mind that we are cooking for five here. So these are pretty big portions. On our videos, you're gonna see a pretty big portion. We're doing family friendly. Yeah. Larger amount of cooking. Yeah. We're gonna let those hang out. 
Another thing that would be really good on those green beans, Callie, is sometimes we'll take um, almonds. Come this way so people can see you. Um, sometimes we'll take almonds and we'll put them in a pan or we'll put them in the oven for like five minutes at like 350 and just almonds. toast them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we'll put some sliced toasted almonds on our green beans oh, yeah. with the butter. So, so Too bad we good. don't have any almonds. We're all out of almonds, I know. And then it says we have to leave it to just natural release, which means we're not gonna do anything with the vent. And we're supposed to leave it to natural release for five minutes, and then we're gonna vent it. Um, I wanna get out the sour cream. Yes, Callie's gonna grab the sour cream because we need to add that to the next stage for the pork chops. So we're just gonna move a few things out of the way. Is this Beatrice stuff open? Yep, that's open. And if you want to start measuring it, Callie, maybe we'll put you right here so everybody can see you measuring. Uh, I know, our fridge. Our fridge is a little crazy right now because I went to Costco a couple days ago, so the fridge is a little full. We have an extra fridge downstairs, and I tell you, with three kids, the amount of Costco shopping that we do is insane. It's insane. So come here, Callie. Maybe give it a stir first, and you're going to need to measure out two-thirds of a cup of sour cream for the next That's step. a third, so I'll need... You need to do how many of those? Two-thirds of a cup, so that means two. Two. That's right. Let me to help you smear it. I think you're good on one third of a cup. Do you want to empty that and then fill it up again? How do I Just empty. scrape it into that bowl. Okay. That means I can't put it in the bowl anymore. Nope. We'll have to hold it out the next time. Or you could set it here on the lid. Okay. If you watch. Cool. Yep. And you'll fill it up one more time with some more sour cream. This literally is going to taste like Swedish meatballs. You could easily do the same recipe and you could have used pork meatballs or even beef and pork or whatever, just like Swedish meatballs done the same sauce and omitted the, the mushrooms if you don't like the mushrooms. Okay, make that a little bit more full, Kelly, because by the time you scrape it out, you might not get 100% of what's in the Loik. Ah, a little more, be generous, we like sour cream. There you go. Loik. Okay, so I'm gonna put your sour cream away and scrape that into the bowl. And then I can lick the spoon. And then she can lick the sour cream spoon. Loik. Okay, so we're almost at the point of opening up this bad boy and showing you guys what that's like when you vent this. You want to be super duper careful. Stay back for safety It matters. scares us every time. And we don't have a vent hood above our island and we always use the island. It would probably be better if you could do this if you had a vent hood because it does release an awful lot of steam and it always steams up our ceiling and I always worry about the paint on the ceiling. But so far, so good. I'm sure it's meant. You can also get little, um, little vent things that deflect the steam off into one direction. I've seen lots of them they are just made out of silicone and sometimes they look like a dragon head or you can get some really funny ones on Amazon. Like so what? we don't have one of those, but I do see the purpose of them. Okay. You can lick it, but then we're gonna have to use something different to scrape that into the pot okay. eventually. This is why we measured a little heavy on our measurements. Kelly likes her sour cream. I'm All gonna right. stay back. You ready, Kelly? I just want you to come right here. You'll still be in video, so everyone can okay. see you, but you're gonna be away from the vent here. You ready? Mm -hmm. Don't jump. Come well, on. you can jump if you want to. I'm gonna reach over you here. So as you can see, it's gonna let go of a lot of steam. Stay clear, let it do its thing. It's gonna like release steam for a couple of minutes. Let it do its thing. Uh. And never ever, Callie, never ever put your hand or your face or any other body part near that steam. Because nope. that steam could burn you as bad as anything else. Okay? It could burn you as bad as the tire. It's very, very, and sometimes it spits a little bit of hot liquid, so you have to be careful where you're standing, okay? So that's the venting, and once that's done venting, we're going to thicken up the sauce. We're going to pull out the pork chops, and we're going to thicken up the sauce. Yeah, it's a lot of steam. You have to be really careful, Cheryl. It's a lot of steam. It builds an incredible amount of pressure and it does a phenomenal job cooking. So yeah, it really does have a lot of steam. Mm -hmm. Be careful, be really, really careful. And as long as you fully let it vent, um, we first did the five minutes of natural release. Natural release just means that you do not open the valve. You just let it do its thing. You just turn off the heat, let it sit. And then this um, is when you're actually gonna open it up when you're going to release, manually release the rest of the pressure. Mm -hmm. So once that is completely done, making any sort of hissing sound, then you open it. Do not be tempted to open it too soon. 
you're ever gonna hear about somebody getting seriously burned from a pressure cooker like this, it's gonna be from opening the lid too soon. I have never had this thing splash liquid out or do anything crazy, but I always wait till it's completely vented. Cold water. You're gonna add it because you could just add your glucky straight in here as long as you have a silicone whisk so that you don't scratch the inside is a nonstick coating on the Ninja Foodie Pot. So if you had a silicone whisk, you could just whisk it right in and be really careful to be sprinkling it really, really gently so that your glucky doesn't um, clump. But I don't have a silicone whisk and I don't wanna scratch my pot. So we're just gonna do it into a separate bowl with a little bit of cool water and then we're gonna like make a slurry essentially and dump it in. Okay, so it's totally done making sound. Just to be safe, Callie, if you could back up like two steps, just to be safe. So you just unlock it. It won't unlock if it's still got pressure. And then I just always open it away like that. As you still see, there's a lot of steam in there. It's a lot of heat in there. Okay, I'm gonna take the pork chops out. So I need double of this or one of these? Just one. But don't put that in yet, Callie. We have to get the water. And the thing with glukey is you gotta sprinkle it in while you whisk. So it's yeah. gonna be kind of a two person job to do the glukey. Otherwise it clumps the second it hits the liquid. Ooh, I should have given you a bird's eye view. So here's our pork chops coming out, very hot. Let me bring you over and show you what it looks like. If you can see, look at that beautiful, beautiful yummy sauce that has formed all that flavor in eight minutes. Like it's incredible how much flavor and how deep. Like this almost looks like French onion soup. What's in the pot right now? It looks delicious. And I bet if you would have used steaks or like a roast and pulled it out, you basically would have had French onion soup in there. Basically what that liquid would have tasted like. Okay, so I'm getting the pork out of here. Just trying to keep all the onions in the pot. I'm just gonna set these guys aside. They're really hot. So I'm gonna sprinkle the glucky if you want to whisk. Okay. Because it's kind of, you gotta make sure that you're whisking it the whole time. Where so do you get it... your recipes from? Oh, this particular mm -hmm. recipe was from the Wholesome Recipe Box. Um, where do I get them from? Pinterest and a lot of Google searching. Yeah. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Well, we put the glucky in there. It called for arrowroot starch or cornstarch, which neither of them, as far as I know, are on plan for doing THM. Um, this is actually, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, shouldn't quote me on this, but I think this is a keto recipe. So um, we're using glucky. It says quarter of a teaspoon, but I feel like we have a lot of liquid in there and I want it to really be like a gravy, so we're gonna do half a teaspoon. And if it's too thick, we'll just add more stock to thin it out. Okay, here we go, Kelly. Here comes the rest of the glucky. You're doing an awesome job. Working with glucky, it really is. Like, you gotta whisk while you sprinkle. You don't wanna get those, like, gelatinous lumps. Those are so gross. Okay, we got it all in there. So we just made a slurry with some water and the glucky. Again, we just wanna, don't wanna scratch our pot. Okay, so this, we're gonna put it back on to simmer. Gonna get it back to the simmer, or the saute function. Just gonna get that rolling. Oh, this is like thick. And we're this gonna, is like jelly. Yep, that's what you want. So you literally made a slurry, if you it's can like see jelly. that. It's like jelly. Yep, the glucky and the water just made like a slurry. So now we're gonna work fast and we're gonna get it in there. So we're just gonna put our slurry in there. Can I quickly stir it? You betcha. Just don't splash yourself, okay? Oh. Just be careful. So we're just gonna stir up. Callie's gonna stir that up. And we're gonna hope it thickens up some some anyway we want it to be like a nice not too runny i mean a little runny would be okay i'm doing a figure eight you're doing a figure eight you think then it won't splash as much so i've got this just uh sauteing on high just trying to bring it up to a little okay. bit of a bubble so it can thicken a bit more and then we are going to turn it off before we add the sour cream you don't want to add your sour cream when it's like simmering because you're going to end up it's with like a, sour cream i'm basically <clears throat> doing an infinity symbol you are Okay, so I think we're gonna stir in our mushrooms. I'll go grab them. Okay. And we'll stir our mushrooms in now. So they infuse with the flavor. Okay. So we're gonna, whoops. Should I scrape them? You bet. I'll let you scrape them so that they don't splash too much. Be careful. So again, the mushrooms are optional. They're not in the original recipe. We will post the recipe um, to the comments when we're done here. We'll post it on the THM page here in the comments. And then if you're watching the replay on YouTube, um, we will post them at the end of the video. 
post the recipe at the end of the video. Okay, it's looking good. I'm gonna give you guys another view. It's hard to tell with the Ninja Foodie, you can't really see. Yeah. We're gonna give you another peek. Mmm, doesn't that look delicious? It's gonna be so flavorful. Okay. Okay, we're really coming to a nice boil here, so nice simmer. And it's not really thickening. I know once we add the sour cream, it'll thicken a little bit. I think we want it just a tad thicker because we really do want this to be a little more like a gravy. Okay, here my gut tells me I would love to add some oat fiber to this. Oat fiber, uh, just like the Trim Healthy Future cookbook, I think has the go-to gravy recipe and it's got oat fiber in there. Um, you could definitely make a slurry out of that and stir it in if you wanted. Should um, I go a little more slurry? The thing with the gluki is you don't want to add too much or it can kind of get a bit slimy. So it's a fine line between just having it a bit thick and going too far. You don't want to have like a jello texture when it comes to gravy. You know what, Callie, I think we're good. If it's a little on the runny side, that'll be all right, because these guys are gonna have it on mashed potatoes. As I mentioned, I just made them some golden um, potatoes, made mashed potatoes. I'm not gonna have them, I'm gonna have the green beans that we sauteed in butter and uh, keep it a nice solid S. Cool. And we're gonna take the insert pot out so it can cool just a touch. I'll grab a spoon. What are you grabbing the spoon for, sweetie? Oh, for scraping your sour cream? You can just use a spatula. Okay. Yep. We'll just use the spatula we've been stirring with. <clears throat> we'll just use this one when we're ready, okay? But first I gotta get this inner pot out of here. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set it right here so you be careful, okay? Okay, Callie, we wanna be really careful not to like plop this in. We don't want it to splash anyone, or, you know? Okay, do you wanna put this in? Like, just a little like this and just like lift it and set it in. Okay. I'll let you come on this side and do that. I'll do it like a little bit at a time. Callie's gonna add the sour cream. Maybe I'll give everybody a little aerial view here. Like a bird. Like a bird, they can see you in action. They can see our awful looking oven mitts. We'll take those out of there. <gasps> As we do these videos, we're realizing how sad some of our kitchen stuff looks and how much we need to replace some of it. We got some really nice knives at Costco for $27. So we replaced some of our knives. Looking good, Kelly. Get the rest in there and just give it a gentle stir. And then we'll put our pork chops back in. Keep. I put the pork it's chops looking back in. Good. You can just be really careful when you set them in, okay? I will go slow. Slowly. I think this would be awesome with some fresh thyme. When we have our garden going in summer, we're gonna try the same recipe again. We're gonna put some fresh thyme in there. Yeah. This really just looks like cream of mushroom soup now. Mm -hmm. THM style. Okay. I'll hold the, the pork chop plate up here you want to very gently put them back in there. Ten, you uh, could just literally pour the sauce over the pork chops if you had the pork chops in a casserole or something like that. We're just gonna put them in there, let them mingle a little. Mingle. Just be careful not to drop them, Callie. Don't want you to get splashed. We'll just let them mingle with the sauce a little bit and then we're gonna plate some of this up and show you the finished product. There you go. Okay, pour the juices in there from the pork chops. Gonna give them a little stir with these. Okay. We're gonna plate some of this up and then we're gonna let you guys go so the family can eat. Okay, Callie, so we're gonna plate this without, and we'll plate this one like for mom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna get one of these pork chops and you wanna grab um, the ladle from over there so we can put some of the sauce on the pork chop. Can I put the sauce? You can. I will set it right here and then I'll bring the green beans over. Sure you get some of those mushrooms in there. I love the mushrooms. Ooh, that looks delicious. That looks perfect, Callie. That's just the right amount Should of sauce. Should I drizzle some over your green beans? No, I think this is gonna be perfect. The green beans have butter already. I'm just gonna get this nice plated up and show everybody what we got. Voila. So I hope you guys can see our finished product. Oh, we just plate. Can you see it? I hope you can see it, our delicious. Uh, we could definitely have thickened up the gravy a little bit more, but it looks good to me, and I think I'm gonna dive in. Mm -hmm. And thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoy your dinner as much as we're going to. Bye. Bye.